Uh, I'm going to be taking over from Peter, give his voice a bit of a rest. Um, I'm significantly less experienced giving this, uh, this presentation than Peter is, so hopefully uh, he'll uh, chime in if I miss an important point. So we had just, um, this is the last slide that we talked about, <coughs> so just to set the context again, we were talking about defining tasks and having tasks that can depend on each other, so these are declaring prerequisites. And an important point was these are prerequisites, not ordering as such. So they, I'm saying that in order to run, in order for the task jar to run, um, these do the, the things that these other tasks do are prerequisites to that having run. Um, but of those two prerequisites, there's no concept of ordering between the two. So Gradle is free to choose which one it runs first or to run them in parallel if it, if it so desires, even though at the moment it won't. So, with those last tasks that we did, you'll notice they had dependencies, but they didn't do anything. The jar task didn't actually create a jar. The uh, process resources didn't actually process any resources. And we could have made them do that by typing in do last and then some groovy code in there that did stuff. But it'd be kind of nice if there were already tasks that did that that we could use. And so there's a concept of a task type. And most tasks that you use when you're writing um, Gradle builds would use pre-existing task types because that's how you leverage uh, and get reuse. So here we have an example of a copy files task, and that's named copy files in our build, but it's of type copy. And what that means is that basically it extends from a class called copy. And what copy provides is a task action by default, which copies files, strangely enough, and some extra API for configuring exactly what we are going to copy. So if you don't specify that type copy, what you are actually doing before is creating a task of type default task, which doesn't do anything. So to drill into this a bit further, um, from the default task, there's a, certain, um, there's a certain API that you can use in configuring the task. Other types add more API. So um, the task hello world there is a default task. It uses some of the default methods, default task API, such as only if, which is only run this task if this is true, um, and the do last that we've already seen. So only if and do ask and things like that, because they're on default task, they are available to all tasks. However, if we say that this task is of type copy, um, we get these from and into methods from the, the copy class. So now I can say from source to into target there, and there I have a task that will copy all the files from that source directory into that target directory, making use of the actions and everything that are defined in the copy type. So the, what, we, what we call this this block here is configuration. So that API that that task type uh, exposes allows you to configure this task. We'll get, talk about more of this um, more later on, but because it's really important, I'll just touch into it now. So that configuration is configuration of what the task will do when it's executed. It's not code that is run when the task is executed. It's a really and there'll, there'll, there'll be an exercise on that, so it'll be, we'll hammer that in. So, Shine, that's fine if you want to use your own, if you want to use the provided task types that come with Gradle, but sometimes it can be useful to implement your own task type so that you can get reuse yourself instead of, uh, if, you, if you have two types of the same sort of thing, putting the, the, the groovy code in yourself. So, of course, you can implement your own tasks or your own task types and then use those types in your builds. So basically, when you implement a task, it's a plain old Java object extending default task. And you declare the method that is an action with the um, task action. So, for example, here is a example of an FTP task, extends default task. 
its task action is to FTP to a hard-coded host and then in here you'd put the uh, put your code for doing the FTP and then in your builds you'd be able to have multiple tasks of this type. And so, let's see actually if we... <coughs> So here the host is hard-coded into the implementation. In a real implementation, you would expose a configuration method that allows you to set the host so you can FTP to different hosts. Actually, we can already configure this one. Oh, yes, sorry. Yes, that is a, um, that's a property. So you can already set the host. That's actually a default. Now, the build lifecycle. Um, Understanding this is probably really probably the most important thing when you're starting at Gradle. I'd say that it's 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 the vast majority of be beginner questions is because people didn't know about this. When you run the build, there are actually three separate phases that happen. Um, the initialization phase, which sort of sets everything up, looks at your init Gradle, Gradle property sets them up. If you've got a multi, if you've got a multi-build, multi project build, sub-projects, it finds them all and, and sets them all up. Then the configuration phase. And what that does is it goes through and evaluates all your build scripts, your Gradle scripts that you've run, that you've written. So the important thing to remember is that this phase, I am running, that's a groovy script, right? I'm running that groovy script. I'm not running the tasks in the groovy script, I'm not executing the tasks. I'm running that Groovy script and what running that Groovy script does is define the tasks to Gradle. Okay? And basically builds up an object model with all the tasks and a, a graph of all their dependencies and then finally in the execution phase it says, hey, what task did you want to execute? Finds it in that graph it's built up and then follows that graph to find all the dependencies and executes them. Okay? But the important point is the actual bit that runs that Groovy um, file is not the execution phase. It's not the point where we're doing the task, it's the point where we're understanding what tasks are available. So everyone managed to make the date task depend on the um, hello task and execute the date task um, and you would have seen that it ran the hello task because first. Um, what did you see from Gradle tasks all? Right, but there were some extra tasks there, right? So there's some tasks that Gradle automatically has for you, as well as your tasks. Uh, dry run, what did that do? Right, so it tells you what it would do, but doesn't actually do it. So that's kind of useful if you're a bit worried about having got it wrong. I saw some indexing, so that will actually show you your dependency tree, if you will? It shows a grouping. Um, more often, so you can group tasks together so they show. There are other, then, then in those tasks you would have seen uh, some of those tasks are actually for showing your dependency information. So I don't think, I'm not totally sure what you're referring to, but I don't think that's dependency. Oh, right, just yes. Yes, sorry, you are totally correct. I was thinking of something else. Okay. Um, okay, so the interesting part of this is, is the print line statements. Who was surprised by the order in which the print line statements came out? Yeah, well, the whole point of this lab was to surprise you. <laughs> uh, I don't understand at top level two when the instruction said put high level print line, top level print line. So the bottom is actually a top level. Yes. So they don't mean within the file, they mean within the nesting structure of the curly braces. Yeah, that by top level we mean outside all the curly braces. And 
anywhere in the fall. Anywhere in the fall, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, here's an example. We've done a, a print line right at the top of the file. We've got our print line of the hello task. We've put another print line in the date in the configuration block outside of the do last but within the date configuration block and we've got another at the top level of the nesting hierarchy in the file, the last line of the file. So it's not an all task, it's, the, it's a flag to the task tasks. <laughs> so Gradle tasks is a task that comes with Gradle that tells you what tasks you have. Um, the, 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 the all flag makes sure that you see all the tasks. So there's a, there's a concept, Gradle tries to figure out which of the tasks you're interested in by default. And all says don't do that, just show me all of them. Is there any way to say execute all tasks? Rather than this? Execute all the tasks. Uh, I'm not aware of one. I'm not sure why you want to do that. Um, <laughs> Generally, I mean, you have, you have your high-level entry tasks and there'll be a, a certain number of them. Um, and the idea is that the, your tasks should be declarative and sort of talk about what you're trying to do or what you're trying to create. Is there a default task like in the end? Yes. Yep. There's a, there's a default mechanism. You can specify default tasks so that it will just run it. Yep. So you can write the tasks that depend on all other tasks if you want to? No, I want to just think about you want to <laughs> All right. Uh, So there was my code. If I run hello, I got top level one, date configuration, top level two, and then hello world. Okay. So there's a few surprising things there potentially. So the first thing that we saw was top level one. So what's happened when I've run Gradle? is the first thing it's done is it's executed this groovy script. And because it's just executing that groovy script, well, the first thing that groovy script is print line. So that's potentially not that surprising. The next thing that it had was this line. Now, that's potentially surprising for two reasons. The first one is this, is in, this looks like it's inside the date task, but I ran the hello task. <coughs> but I got this line, OK? Um, the sec well, that's, that's mainly the, the, the reason for confusion. I, I didn't execute this task, but I got that, I got that line. And that's because this, this script, as a Groovy script, isn't run at the execution phase, it's run in the configuration phase. So what it does is it runs this entire, entire script. So when it runs this script, let's, 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 have a, let's step through what it does. First it prints that line, then it says, oh, hello, someone's ask me to define a task called hello and then it runs this configuration block for hello which configures hello and it runs the do last method for hello and what the do last method does is it takes that code block pass to do last doesn't execute it and saves it away and says right so when we when if someone ever asks me to run the task hello I'll run that piece of code then it comes down here says cool I finished that task oh there's another task I need to define OK, I'll, I'll define a task and I'll configure it by running this block. I run this block. It says, OK, I've decided this task depends on this other task that I've got. And then it runs this piece of code. So I haven't even got to the point of executing tasks yet. I'm just understanding what tasks are available and, and configuring them. And so that's why it runs it, even though I'm not going to execute this task, because this is configuration code. Then it has another piece of configuration code that configures what that task will do when it is executed. And then it finishes and then we print line top level two. That is the configuration phase finished. 
And now we move into the execution phase. I look at what was passed to me on the command line. It said hello. I go, ah, oh, I remember hello. I, I configure that, that task to exist in the configuration phase. And what did it do? Well, it had to run this line of code. So then it runs that line of code. So our output was top level one, date configuration, top level two. Then we executed and we got hello world. Is that sufficiently bent everyone's mind? <laughs> it's pretty simple when you understand it, but it's, gee, it's confusing if, if you haven't figured it out. Does that mean you can do things like put a condition around the two last? You totally can if you wanted to. If that, if, yeah, I wouldn't recommend it, but you certainly can. So, I mean, all of this, all of this configuration stuff is groovy code. You can put anything in there. Um, usually, I would suggest using it to configure the task. <laughs> um, but yeah, like we, as I said, a large percentage of the, the newbie questions we get are people putting code in here that they expect to run when the task is executed, rather than inside here. Um, you know, they, something's not working, so they put a print line here expecting that to happen when the task is executed, and then they come and say, my task is running even though I haven't, <laughs> I haven't asked Gradle to run the task, and uh, no, it's just being configured. Because obviously Gradle needs to configure all the tasks because it doesn't know what task you're going to want to. Um, I should say that some of this is in, in the, on the roadmap in the, in the future. Um, will change a little bit because obviously if you have a very large build file, it's a bit inefficient to configure a whole lot of tasks that you're not going to use. So if you think about it, we should be able to a little bit smarter and go, hey, I potentially don't need to configure everything because I know what the top level task is doing. But that's not the way it works right now. If you have a task and you don't care if it's done first or last, like what's the wrapper you put around it so that it's not done when you're doing the configuration? But then that can you just, can you just do the do and then put the wrapper in? Um, the, the, there's no do, is do last or, or do first. Um, if you don't care, then you don't care. You pick one of them. It's, it's, the other thing to remember is it's a stack. So if I call do last and do last again, then the first do last becomes do second last. There is, a, there is a, uh, another piece of um, syntax, whereas if I put two angle brackets in here, then that whole block becomes a do last or a do first thing. Um, we, we don't like that because it gets people even more confused because if you don't see that, then you think it's a configuration block. So even people who understand configuration get confused and forget which one it is. And so we kind of, we, we actually like using do last and do first now because it's more explicit. <laughs> the other one is sort of more concise and terse, but it, it's, it's harder to leap out and, you go and, and make the distinction between configuration and execution. So generally, we would, we would um, advocate using do last and do first. And if you don't care which one, just pick one. 